Hey everybody! Today's practice problem comes from Economics, Principles, and Applications by Robert Hall and Mark Lieberman. We're going to be working with the 6th edition and we're going to be doing Chapter 2, Problem Number 9. The introduction to the problem reads as follows. It says, indicate which curve shifted and in which direction for each of the following. Assume that only one curve shifts. So this is really interesting because usually we think about we're given a scenario and we need to figure out which curve shifts and then figure out from that what the impact on market price and quantity is. What we're being told in this example or in this problem is that we can also work backwards, that we can infer from observing prices and quantity changes in the market which curve must have shifted and in which direction. So we can go through how to do that here. Part A of the problem tells us that we're looking at the market for furniture. And it says that the price of furniture rises as the quantity bought and sold falls. So we need to think about what curve shifts could actually make that happen. So what we're saying is that we have an increase in equilibrium price and a decrease in equilibrium quantity. So we can start by drawing our typical supply and demand curves and then thinking about how we need to shift these. So you just draw a demand curve like this and draw a supply curve like this. And think about, we could start by thinking about what shifts are going to cause an increase in equilibrium price. So we know that we have two ways to get a price increase in a market. We can either have an increase in demand so if we increase the demand, say to here, we would get a movement, we get an increase in price. We could also get an increase in price if we had a decrease in supply. So if we shifted the supply curve this way, we would get a change in equilibrium from here to here, which would also result in an increase in equilibrium price. However, that wasn't the only thing that we were told. We were also told that there was a decrease in the quantity bought and sold in the market. And that just means that there's a decrease in the equilibrium quantity, right? So here, if we were to think about these two possibilities, we would notice that the demand increase would lead to an increase both in price and quantity, which is not what we're looking for. On the other hand, a decrease in supply would in fact give us both an increase in equilibrium price and a decrease in equilibrium quantity. So this scenario here is the one that is in fact consistent with the story that's being told. And we can show we have a Q1 star like this and a P1 star like this and then a Q2 star here, and a P2 star here. So we can confirm that what we're drawing is in fact consistent with what we were looking for, and we can see a change in equilibrium that does in fact go up and to the left as expected. Part B of the question tells us that we're looking at the market for apartment rentals. And we're told that the apartment vacancy rates increase while average monthly rent on apartments declines. So we can think about what's going on here. Now, this is put to us in sort of a weird way, right? Apartment vacancy rates increase. Well, we want to think about whether that corresponds to an increase or a decrease in the quantity of apartments being rented in this case, but still, you know, apartment rentals being bought and sold. We said, well, vacancy rates increasing, well, that's more likely to correspond to a decrease in equilibrium quantity than an increase in equilibrium quantity, right? That technically what we're seeing, if we see an increase in vacancies, then technically we're seeing a surplus of apartments. But let's just, that's making this a little bit too complicated. So let's just work within the framework of what we're given here. So again, we can think about in this case, we have both a decrease in equilibrium quantity and also a decrease in price. So we can think about how that can happen. Again, we can start by focusing on the decrease in price. 
and we can think about the different ways that we could get a decrease in price. And we notice that we could either get a decrease in price via an increase in supply, that if we shifted supply to the right, our equilibrium would go down to the right. So we would get, this is one way to decrease price. But we could also get a decrease in equilibrium price by having a decrease in demand. That we could say instead, if we decreased demand, so demand shifted to the left, that our equilibrium would move down to the left. That's the second way to get a decrease in price. So we just want to think about which one of these ways to get a change in one of the variables we were told about gives the correct change in the other variable that we were told about. And in this situation, we were told that both price and quantity decrease. So it's this second situation, it's the decrease in demand that it's actually consistent with that. And we can confirm that by drawing our increase in, or excuse me, our decrease in demand. So we're seeing a decrease in demand, which just shift to the left. And we notice that our equilibrium goes from here to here. And we could call this P1 star and P2 star. And we'd also have a Q1 star here and a Q2 star here. So this is showing the set of changes that's consistent with a decrease in equilibrium quantity and also a decrease in price. So this is fine as an answer to the question, but we can come back to this issue of vacancy rates if we wanted to, if we wanted to be really thoughtful about this and say, well, wait, if we have an increase in vacancy rates, it must be the case that this price didn't adjust all the way down. Then maybe the price is still a little bit too high and we still have somewhat of a surplus here, whereas we used to be in equilibrium. That that's sort of the second order thinking on this type of problem. But in any case, the change or the shift in either supply or demand that's consistent with this scenario is in fact this decrease in demand here. The last part of the question asks us to look at the market for computers. So it says the price of personal computers continues to decline as sales skyrocket. So that's obviously a decrease in price. And if sales are skyrocketing, that's an increase in the quantity of transactions rather than a decrease, right? So we're trying to figure out what shift in either supply or demand could cause both a decrease in price and an increase in equilibrium quantity. So again, we can start with our basic supply and demand diagram here. And just as we talked about in the last part, said, oh, well, there are actually two ways to get a decrease in price. That we could either have an increase in supply. So if we shifted supply to the right, supply would be here. And that would give a decrease in price. Or we could have a decrease in demand. And in that situation, our demand would shift to the left and we would get something here. Again, getting a decrease in price. However, we're looking for that scenario that has not only a decrease in price, but also an increase in the quantity bought and sold. And it's only, it's only the supply that's consistent with both of those observations. So we can conclude in this example that what we're observing is a result in the increase in supply of personal computers. So we can conclude that supply must have shifted to the right and we would get a change in equilibrium that in fact is what we are looking for that goes down to the right. And we could label these. We could say this is Q1 star and this is Q2 star. So that's our increase in the quantity bought and sold or the skyrocketing sales as per the problem. And this here, we call this P1 star and this P2 star. This is the decrease in price that we were talking about. So we can confirm that our scenario is in fact consistent with what we were told. Interestingly enough, it's also consistent with reality, right? That in practice over the last you know, five or 10 years, we've seen 
computers, especially if we're holding quality of computer constant or processor and so, so, much, so on and so forth constant, we're seeing the prices go down and we're seeing more of the computers being sold because the price going down makes them actually more accessible. So this is actually what's been happening in the market largely due to changes in technology. That we have positive changes in technology and we said, hey, technology is a determinant of supply and an increase in technology causes an increase in supply, which is exactly what we're seeing here, which is pretty cool. There are two things in general that are likely to be helpful to solve this sort of problem. The first is I've summarized the results of different types of shifts and their effect on price and quantity. So we can see that a decrease in supply is going to increase equilibrium price and decrease equilibrium quantity. An increase in supply is going to decrease price and increase quantity. A decrease in demand is going to decrease price and decrease quantity. And an increase in demand is going to increase price and increase quantity. So worst case scenario, I guess you could memorize these four conditions and then you could either work forward if you knew what was shifting to tell me what happens to price and quantity or I guess tell your professor. Or you could work backwards and observe what's happening to price and quantity and figure out what must have shifted to cause that. But I don't generally recommend memorization because it's risky. I don't like memorizing. I'm not good at it. You run the risk of memorizing things wrong or remembering things wrong. That you don't have to do this because you can always draw the pictures to remind you of what's going on. The other helpful thing to note is that when we're shifting a curve, our equilibrium is actually moving along the curve that doesn't shift. So for example, here as we shift supply, we can either decrease supply or we can increase supply. And what we're doing when we move to these different equilibrium points is we're just moving along the demand curve in either direction. Similarly, if we were to shift demand, our equilibrium points are just moving along the supply curve in either direction, right? So what we'll notice is that the demand curve slopes downward. So it's not surprising that when we're shifting supply, we're getting movements in price and quantity that are in opposite directions, which is what we see here. We see that as we're shifting supply, we either have price going up and quantity going down, or price going down and quantity going up. On the other hand, if we're shifting demand, we're just moving along this supply curve. So we're moving along the curve where price and quantity go in the same direction. So it's not surprising that when we're shifting demand, we get changes in price and quantity that are in the same direction. So we see here when we have a decrease in demand, price and quantity are both decreasing. And when we have an increase in demand, price and quantity are both increasing, which is exactly what we would expect if we look at the pictures here.